the majority of transmission that we know about is that people who have symptoms transmit the virus to other people through infectious droplets. But there are a subset of people who don't develop symptoms. Um, and to truly understand how many people don't have symptoms, we don't actually have that answer yet. So when we say asymptomatic, we mean somebody that does not have symptoms and does not go on to develop symptoms. Truly no symptoms. We know a number of them who are reported as asymptomatic actually may have mild disease. They may go on to develop symptoms. They may not quite register that I'm sick. You know, it's, I just feel a little bit unwell. I'm just a little bit under the weather. I'm feeling a little bit fatigued. And some of those individuals um, we would classify as pre-symptomatic, which means they have not yet developed symptoms. We know from some of the viral shedding studies from some of the lab work that there are people who are infected with COVID-19 that can, that can be PCR positive, that can test positive one to three days before they develop symptoms. And that's something that we've known for, for quite some time now. What we need to better understand, and this is one of the major unknowns, is, is what proportion is that is contributing to transmission. When you sing or you're shouting in a nightclub because you can't hear your friend and you're saying, you know, can mm. you hear me? Mm. And you're, you're close by and you're projecting your voice at someone. Then it's clear that in that situation, if the virus is present in your upper respiratory mucosa, then there's every likelihood that you can project that virus. The last couple of days have been the highest number of daily cases uh, in the world. So in terms of pandemic generation, we are still very much on the, up, on the upward climb on this mountain. But what some countries have shown, uh, many countries have shown, is if you go at this in a very systematic way, and you use a comprehensive approach, that there is enough stoppability in the virus. We've seen that with the physical measures, uh, social distancing, we've seen it with, uh, with surveillance. And we have some choices to make as a society, because it is clear, if we can identify cases and their contacts, and we ask those contacts to quarantine themselves, and we support them in that quarantine, that that can be a very successful way of both stopping the disease and avoiding uh, large-scale lockdowns in the future.